The date August 18, 2006 forever altered the trajectory of SpaceX. On that day, NASA awarded SpaceX a contract to develop a service for delivering cargo to the International Space Station. The first generation version of the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft debuted in 2010 with a test flight in low Earth orbit. The Dragon capsule accomplished its first trip to the International Space Station in May 2012 on a second demonstration mission under NASA's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services or COTS program. Through the COTS program, NASA contributed $396 million towards the development of the Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 launcher in a public-private partnership with SpaceX. At the time, SpaceX was just four years old. The company had attempted a single launch of its Falcon 1 rocket from an atoll in the Pacific Ocean a few months earlier. This small rocket, capable of putting a few hundred kilograms into orbit, had flown for about half a minute before falling back to Earth and crashing into a reef just offshore. The rocket failed because, even before it cleared the launch pad, a fuel leak caused the engine to catch fire. This was hardly a sterling record for a spaceflight company. So, at the time, NASA was making a big bet on SpaceX. According to Gwyn Shotwell, who is president and chief operating officer of SpaceX, what this original NASA contract meant to the company in 2006. Oh, that was really important money, she said. We were a little company. We were jackasses at that time. We just had a failure on the pad. We blew up a rocket in March of that year. Yeah, it was super critical. From my perspective, NASA was acknowledging that, even though we had a failure on Falcon 1, they felt like we had the right attitude and the right technology to extend this to a much larger rocket, the Falcon 9, and a capsule. Over the next half decade, SpaceX would design, develop, and test its Cargo Dragon spacecraft. As usual, the company looked to cut costs and upend the traditional aerospace model. In this video, Engineering Today will discuss SpaceX Dragon capsule, which returned to Earth, wrapping up a successful trip to International Space Station that heralded the end of one era and the start of another for its SpaceX builders. Let's get into the details. On Tuesday, April 7th, the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft was uninstalled from the Nadir port on the Harmony or Node 2 module of the International Space Station. NASA Mission Control MCCH, at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, commanded the Space Station Remote Manipulator System commonly known as Canadarm2, to move the spacecraft into the release position. The command to release Dragon from the robotic arm occurred at 9.06 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It was just a moment but marked the last time a robotic arm will ever catch or release a SpaceX Dragon. Once the spacecraft was released, the arm retreated away from the now free-flying spacecraft. Dragon performed three departure burns to back away from the station using its onboard Draco thrusters. These initial maneuvers were performed under the control of NASA controllers at MCCH. About six hours after leaving the space station, Dragon splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, about 500 kilometers southwest of Long Beach, California, where SpaceX recovery teams were waiting to pluck the capsule from the ocean. Good splashdown of Dragon confirmed, completing the 20th and final resupply mission for SpaceX's first iteration of the Dragon spacecraft, SpaceX said on Twitter. The SpaceX Dragon capsule launched to the station on the CRS-20 cargo mission on March 6, carrying more than 4,300 pounds of supplies, and arrived at the orbiting lab three days later. The same capsule previously flew to the station in February 2017 and December 2018. It returned with more than 3,950 pounds of cargo, including various pieces of hardware and equipment for maintenance and upgrades, as well as completed science investigations. One such investigation returning to Earth is the bio-nutrients demonstration, which aims to produce essential nutrients in space to support long-duration human spaceflight. Also returning is the Biofabrication Facility BFF, 
a 3D biological printer designed to take advantage of microgravity to print small and complex organ structures. The Engineered Heart Tissues EHTs, study, which studies the function of heart tissue in microgravity with the hope of preventing medical problems on long-duration human spaceflight missions, is also on board the Dragon capsule. The mission is the last under SpaceX's original commercial resupply services CRS contract, which NASA awarded in 2008. The contract originally included 12 flights for $1.6 billion. NASA later added eight missions to the contract. The agency has not disclosed the total value of the extended contract. CRS-20 was the third flight of the C-112 Dragon capsule, which previously supported the CRS-10 and CRS-16 missions. In total, the spacecraft spent 100 days in space across the three missions to the ISS. C-112 is one of three Dragon capsules to fly three missions, with three other capsules having flown two missions each. Over the last eight years, various SpaceX Dragon spacecraft have spent a total of 547 days attached to the space station, flown more than 990,000 pounds of cargo to the space station, and returned more than 77,000 pounds of science experiments and other cargo back to Earth. For this service, SpaceX offered NASA a pretty good bargain. According to the space agency's own analysis, NASA's investment in SpaceX bought a service that cost as much as 10 times less than the traditional cost plus contracting approach and 2-3 to three times less than the cost of continuing to fly cargo on the space shuttle. Future SpaceX cargo missions will use a version of the Crew Dragon spacecraft the company developed for NASA's commercial crew program. The first SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle made a successful uncrewed flight to the station last year. Like that vehicle, the new cargo ship will be able to dock itself to the station instead of an astronaut catching it with a robotic arm, like some sort of cosmic claw machine game. That vehicle will have 20% more volume than the original Cargo Dragon. Tuesday's splashdown was the last planned SpaceX Dragon splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. As SpaceX transitions to the new Dragon 2 spacecraft, both cargo and crew Dragon missions will finish in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Florida. It takes a day or two for Dragon capsules to get back to port in California on SpaceX recovery ships. That transit time will be cut with splashdowns in the Atlantic. While SpaceX and NASA do not initially plan to reuse Dragon 2 capsules for crew missions, the cargo variant will be qualified to fly to the space station and back to Earth up to five times, officials said. The most flights a first-generation Cargo Dragon spacecraft made was three, including the spacecraft on the CRS-20 mission. The next cargo ship it launches for NASA will be under a new contract called Commercial Resupply Service 2, which will feature a variant of SpaceX Crew Dragon designed for cargo. Gone are the wing-like solar arrays, replaced by solar panels on the hull of the craft's service module. The cargo version of Dragon 2 will launch without seats, cockpit controls, and other life support systems required to sustain astronauts in space. The cargo version will also launch without the Super Draco escape thrusters fitted to human-rated Dragon capsules. This second CRS contract awarded to SpaceX, as well as Orbital ATK, now Northrop Grumman, and Sierra Nevada Corporation in 2016. The first SpaceX mission under that contract, CRS-21, is scheduled for this fall. Northrop Grumman started its flights under the new CRS contract in November 2019, launching two Cygnus spacecraft to date under the award. Sierra Nevada Corporation is building its first Dream Chaser spacecraft, which the company plans to launch in the fall of 2021. All three companies are guaranteed a minimum of six missions each under their contracts. This SpaceX Dragon 2 will be able to carry more cargo to the space station, but the Dragon 2's primary arrival mode, using docking rather than capture and berthing with a robotic arm, 
comes with a limitation. The hatches through the space station's docking ports are narrower than the passageways through the berthing ports currently used by Dragon cargo vehicles. Northrop Grumman's Cygnus supply ship and Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser space plane are designed to berth to the space station, offering transportation for bulkier items. In turn, SpaceX got a heck of a deal. From this initial award, it is not difficult to follow the dominoes falling in favor of the California Rocket Company. The NASA contract allowed SpaceX to rapidly expand its workforce from dozens to hundreds, investing in brilliant young minds to reach far-reaching goals. NASA wanted tons of cargo sent into space on each mission, and this pushed SpaceX to a bigger rocket. So instead of the Falcon 5, a booster with five Merlin engines, that Elon Musk and the company's engineers were planning as a follow-up to the Falcon 1, SpaceX jumped straight to the now familiar Falcon 9 rocket. A rocket this size was large enough not just for NASA, but to allow SpaceX to compete for both commercial satellite launches and large military payloads. In 2014, at least partly because SpaceX was successfully delivering cargo to the space station, the company was awarded a contract to deliver astronauts as well. NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley are scheduled to launch towards the International Space Station aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule in mid to late May. The test mission, known as Demo-2, will be SpaceX's first ever crewed flight and the first orbital human mission to lift off from American soil since the retirement of NASA's space shuttle fleet in July 2011. Moreover, late last month, NASA has awarded SpaceX with a resupply contract for the Lunar Gateway. SpaceX will employ its Falcon Heavy rocket to launch a new spacecraft called the Dragon XL to the Lunar Outpost under a Gateway Logistics Services GLS, contract before the end of 2024. In less than 15 years, then, the jackasses have developed a spacecraft that's become something of a jack of all trades. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.